Greetings, Earthlings. Today we're going to take a look at uh, developing code for this uh, 6809 system, a little uh, arcade game that I'm building. Uh, but first, let's take a look at some fixes I had to make to the PC board, which is not an unexpected thing, of course. And I did, uh, I did go ahead and uh, create a PC board without prototyping the thing first, so you expect uh, to have to make some changes. First off would be uh, probably the most noticeable thing is this right here. If you recall, if you've seen the previous videos, I had uh, these type of connectors on there mounted directly on the board. Um, however, I uh, had to create a symbol for this and a, and a footprint and such in KiCad which is what I use for the PC board layout, okay, because there wasn't one for that. And I got the pins reversed, so my video was inverted. <laughs> so how to work around that? Well, I, I happened to have this connector, and I was able to bodge that up and uh, get that connected properly. So this will be the video out, and this will be the audio out, and that's all well and good. Couple of other changes we see on the bottom side of the board. You'll see you'll see some blue wires. The blue wires uh, make it look like there's more mods than there actually are. Uh, those are just putting it back. Uh, I tried some various things, and in some cases I would like cut the trace on the card and then wire a blue wire. You know, it's like maybe this should uh, be clocked off the Q clock rather than the E clock. So let me cut the trace. A wire to the E clock and so on, or the Q clock or whatever. And then it's like, oh no, that's, that didn't fix any problem. So then I put it back. And, and in some cases, rather than trying to just put a uh, solder jumper uh, on there or, uh, or solder in a, uh, like a 30 gauge wire, um, I just did a, a blue wire. So I don't know how, if you can see this very well on the screen, but. Uh, the trace goes from there to there, which is exactly where this blue wire is. So this is, these these blue wires are just putting it back exactly as I originally drew it up. The real changes are down here. In fact, see all of the fixes that I had to make were in the video section, that's interesting. Video, oh yes, it's using the um, cheap video uh, techniques uh, from this cheap video cookbook by Don Lancaster. Um, this is the video section down here. This is a processor, 6809. There's some RAM. There's the program memory. There's a 6821 parallel port, an 8253 timer chip. Um, that's all. The rest of it. But this is the this is the video section, and so we can see that the changes are in the video section. Okay. First off, this resistor. Well. There is actually a, a mistake in the schematic published in the book here. Um, it showed this resistor going, the one side of it, going to ground. In fact, it has to go to plus 5 volts. We can verify that by turning back a few pages and seeing uh, the same uh, resistor shown here going to plus 5, or by actually looking at the PC board layout, um, and there's, I forget which one is, uh, yeah, this one, this one shows it best. Um, it's R4, and you can see R4, I hope you can see this on a screen, um, R4 goes to here, this is ground up uh, around here, and this is uh, this is plus five volts because you can see it goes to pin fourteen of of this chip. So um, uh, that was a bug. It's interesting. This is the fourth. Was it first edition fourth printing? No one caught that. It was originally published in 1978. This was published. This particular version of the book was published in 1982. Over four years, nobody caught that. Um, and then you'll also see a capacitor here, and there's another one underneath it. This capacitor, 
let's see if you can see that. This capacitor and this capacitor uh, are, are too small. Uh, the, the values that are specified here in the book. So I had to add additional capacitance in parallel. And I may at some point, I don't have the, the right size capacitor, but now that I know approximately what it is, I can go out and buy some and just replace those two capacitors, it's that one and that one, um, with, the, with the appropriate value and, and undo that bodge, but um, it doesn't really matter. Either way, no one's gonna see it. Finally, uh, there's a, a jumper here. There were four diodes here, and I've reduced that to two diodes. Again, looking at the schematic, well, there, there's, a, there's a good enough view. Um, that's not the right one, though. Looking at the schematic, he's got five volts up here, a 150 ohm resistor, and then four diodes to bring it down to the appropriate uh, level. Well, it brings it down too far, and so I don't get a good, good enough white level. Uh, so I found that removing two of those diodes gives me a proper white level on the video. So that's the changes. And with that, uh, we can look at uh, how we actually go about writing code for this thing. And so we'll look here. Now there's no fancy IDE or anything. I don't even have Emacs. Um, I am using Notepad here. Uh, this is a Windows XP machine, by the way. I'm using Notepad to write the code, and of course it's all written in assembly language. Um, what we're seeing here is the non-maskable interrupt code. Uh, the timer chip generates a, a, a non-maskable interrupt every 60th of a second, which does the vertical sync and uh, and actually re repaints the, the, the screen. Uh, and that's all done in software. So we have 120 lines uh, out of a 265 line field. So roughly half of the CPU time is used for drawing the screen and half of it can be used for actual computing. And that, that's using the techniques from this book. So I have my assembly language code, and then I have found this uh, online assembler called AS9. You can go out and search for it. It's out there on the web somewhere. And I guess this was uh, released by Motorola. Motorola Freeware Cross Assembler, yeah. Um, and it's not a great assembler, but it's uh, sufficient for my purposes. Um, and it's a DOS program, so I go into the DOS box, and I run AS9. Tacobot.asm is the name of my program. Um, this AS9 can output either Motorola S records or binary. The PROM programmer, because you see I, I write the code and then I have to program it into EEPROM, which then gets plugged onto the board, okay? That's the, the old school method. I haven't found a, like a flash memory chip or an EEPROM that's the same size as these EEPROMs, so I'm using UV erasable uh, EEPROMs, old school. So then I go, I assemble the code, and then I, I burn it with this uh, programmer, which you've seen before, this, this mini pro thing. Now this can take binary and Intel hex format. It can't take Motorola S records. Well, I said that this can do binary, output binary. Unfortunately, the binary that it outputs is not the same binary that, format that the, that the mini pro code e expects. So I output as S records, that's this minus S19. The L here means make a listing file. I output it as S records. You can see 
there's some bugs in the program. These were meant to go into the listing file, and instead they came out on the screen here. And then I found another program online which converts from the Motorola S19 uh, S record format to binary that, that this uh, Mini Pro can accept. So that's called MOT2BIN, M-O-T-2-B-I-N. Uh, and I run that, and then, uh, and then I can load, load that code in, uh, burn the EEPROM, and plug it into the board and run my tests, what little tests, what little test capabilities I have. This, this board, as we go back and review once again, it has very little in the way of I.O. or debugging capabilities built into the board. There's one light here that I could blink. Uh, uh, it's connected to a parallel port line, but there's no serial port. There's no, um, you know, debug, uh, debugger built into ROM or anything. Of course, I would need probably a serial port. There's really no inputs right now. Uh, ultimately, it will have push buttons as inputs and a, and a coin acceptor as an input, but. Uh, you know, no, no, no keyboard, no, uh, no serial port. The only output is the video, uh, s you know, section here. But in order to debug that, I mean, I can't, I can't use it to debug itself. <laughs> you know, by, by outputting, by outputting values to the screen if I can't read the screen. So um, I use the logic analyzer a lot uh, for an oscilloscope for debugging uh, to track down these hardware problems. So that's uh, that's what it looks like. And I've got a uh, the code that's in here now. Well, you saw it refreshing the screen, but uh, it, it, it's a Hello World program right there. Here's my main, main loop. Clear the screen, write Hello World, and then, and then return uh, upon which it will loop infinitely in the calling routine because the 6809, as we found out before, has no halt instruction. Although it does have a sync instruction, which is kind of close, but anyway, I just put it in an infinite loop. So let's uh, go fire this thing up and see how it does.